Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on integrals that will involve functions, either exponential or logarithmic, that will have bases other than the natural base E. Here are our three exercises of the day. Now, presumably, if this integral had the base E in here, you'd be comfortable with handling that, whether it be using U substitution or uh, just the unchaining process. So that's going to be our immediate objective, is to rewrite this with base E. So just as explained in the video for differ differentiating functions with uh, bases other than the natural base, we're going to write that 5, we're going to rewrite that 5 as e to the ln 5 raised to the negative x power definite integral from 1 to 2 dx. And let's now rewrite that where, in a way where we just multiply those two exponents according to our exponential properties. There, just like that. So I'm going to recall this formula from one of the earlier videos, which is really just a version of the, the unchaining rule. And we see here that we need to have, for this value of u up here, we need to have u prime sitting right next to it. So let's clear a little space here, and let's put the derivative of that u exponent right next to it. And we can see that the derivative is going to be just negative ln 5. And since I put that inside the integral, that's a constant, I will put this constant outside the integral. Instead of putting negative ln 5 in the denominator, I'll put a negative 1 up top instead. It's all the same. So this is the part where we anti-derive and the u prime goes away in the anti-deriving process. And we get e to the u power. And since it's a definite integral, we won't put plus c. We'll put the brackets and then the limits of integration instead. And of course, that constant out front. So we've completed the anti-deriving process. And let's convert back to the original base, which was 5. Uh, let's recall that the e and the ln 5 are what gave us the 5. And we still have a, a negative x up in the exponent. From 1 to 2 with a constant out front. We'll now plug in our limits of integration. So let's plug in the 2 first. And 5 to the negative 2 power is the same as 1 over 5 squared. So 1 25th minus, we plug in that 1 there, 5 to the negative 1 power is just 1 over 5, with the constant, of course, still out front. We'll do the common denominator. And we see that in this numerator, we'll have 1 minus 5, which will give us negative 4, over the common denominator, 25. And we'll simplify our final answer as being 4 over 25 ln 5, which if you want to type that into calculator, turns out to be about 0 0.0994 or so. So we'll remind ourselves what the original integral was. It's from 1 to 2 underneath the curve, 5 to the negative x power. Pull up the calculator. And even though there is the, the definite integral function or, or feature on this calculator, I always uh, prefer to just do this graphically. And I think there's something beneficial to that. Uh, these window settings seem to work pretty well for this particular exercises, or exercise, <laughs> singular, not plural. And let's go to the second calc number seven.
from one, enter, two, enter. And we see an answer that agrees with ours, 0 0.0994. So let's call this one checked. And let's go on to the next one. All right, in this one, the integrand is the product of an exponential function times a non-exponential function. And we can see that the uh, a connection between this exponent and this uh, multiplier out in front. So we can anticipate that this is the, this is going to be of the e to the u with the u prime sitting out in front. It's going to be of that pattern. So let's focus on the exponential uh, part for right now. And we'll rewrite this 7 as e to the ln 7. And it's being raised to the 3 minus x squared power. So we'll just go ahead and multiply that times the ln 7, 3 minus x squared. And dx, 3 minus x, integral. So if we are to look at this as e to the u power, this would be our u. And u prime would be, let's see, the constant out in front, ln 7. And then we derive that 3 minus x squared. We'd get 2 times 3 minus x to the 1 power. And let's do the chain rule on that. We need to multiply by the derivative of that inside. So that would be negative 1. So that would be our u prime. So let's go back to our integral up top. And let's turn that into a u prime sitting right next to the, to the exponential function. So we've got the 3 minus x covered. Uh, let's put a negative 2 in front, as well as the ln 7. And in order to make that legal, we'll put a let's see, negative 1 over 2 ln 7 out front. So again, we've now successfully got our u prime right here. And I can get this duplicate copy off the screen. And when we anti-derive, we will get the original or this exponential func function, the e to the u power. But let's go ahead and we know we're going to convert that back to a base 7 anyway. So let's go ahead and instead of writing it as e to the ln 7, let's put the original 7 to the 3 minus x squared. And again, that's our e to the u power. Uh, this u prime goes away and this constant stays out in front. So negative 1 over 2 ln 7. And since that is an indefinite integral, we'll put a plus c and put a box around it. That one, I hope you would agree, is not terribly hard. It was just a lot of bookkeeping and making sure we kept track of everything. OK, um, let's just go on to our third and final exercise. With this one, I'd really like to contrast the problem at hand with uh, this one right here. At first glance, we'd probably uh, expect that they might be a little bit similar. Notice that the numerator over denominator here has just been flipped. Here's the former numerator, here's the former denominator. So a, a student new to calculus might uh, assume that there's going to be something similar between these two, but I need to caution you, there really isn't a whole lot similar between these two. They're going to take quite different approaches. Notice that the one on the right, uh, we would probably rewrite this. We'd probably rewrite that as 5 times 6 to the negative 3x minus 1 dx. And then notice that this first uh, term is just of the e to the u variety. It's kind of like our exercise number one in this video. And of course, this is easy to anti-derive. So we would proceed from there. But we're going to find that the one on the left is going to take, again, a different approach. Now, of course, both exercises contain uh, these exponential functions, 6 to the 3x. So they do have that in common. But we need to observe a different pattern. 
uh, an, another familiar pattern um, in this one. Do you notice which mold this fits? Uh, it's a pattern that we studied not too long ago and should still have fresh on our minds. The pattern involving a fraction, uh, a numerator over a denominator. Well, doesn't this look like the u prime over u pattern could fit? So let's get this one off the screen and tackle the one at hand here. And let's, let's start by defining this denominator as u. And of course, then that would beg the question, what would u prime equal? Well, we start by rewriting u. We'd say u equals 5 minus, we'll rewrite this 6 as e to the ln 6. And now you're probably getting used to this. We'll just uh, go ahead and multiply that exponent up top, parentheses 3x. And then we'll say u prime equals, of course the 5 is going to give us a derivative of 0, minus this function itself, e to the ln 6 3x times the derivative of the exponent, which in this case is ln 6 times 3, the, the constant in front of the x. Okay? That would be our u prime. Uh, just to avoid any confusion, I do want to point out that in the past and previous exercises, we've referred to the exponent of e. We've referred to, to that as being u in the past. Notice that in this case, we're, we're referring to u as being this whole thing. So try to avoid that confusion. And I also want to remind you that if you feel comfortable doing it, uh, you may, instead of writing the e to the ln 6 in this step, you may say, okay, I know that's really just 6. And again, the whole purpose of writing it with base e is so that we can remind ourselves uh, about when the chain rule comes that we're going to need the ln 6 times 3 here. That was the purpose of the, of the rewriting with base e. But again, you can just write the original 6 to the 3x here if you feel comfortable doing so. So let's compare that to the, to the numerator of the original integrand now. Compare this to, to this. And notice that they're essentially the same with the exception of a few constants, which we know we can put inside and then balance them out on the outside as needed. So that's going to be the approach we're going to take. Let's scroll down just a tiny bit here and let's rewrite the original integrand. We'll copy this down. Let's put the negative and then the ln 6 times 3 here. And to balance it out, we'll put negative 1 over 3 ln 6 out here. And so now we have u underneath u prime. And we will anti-derive. And we know we'll get ln absolute value of u. So ln 5, absolute value 5 minus 6 to the 3x. Uh, with the constant out in front. And then, since we've just anti-derived, plus c. So, a reminder, there are a number of ways that you may see this final answer written. Somebody else may choose to write this as a numerator over denominator. Something like this. You may check in the back of the book on a homework assignment. And maybe they'll take the 3 in front of the natural log in the denominator and use the log property put, to put that 3 back, put that 3 up in the exponent. At which time, instead of writing 6 to the 3rd, you might see 2 16 instead, which is, of course, 6 to the 3rd power. Or maybe on a test, you'll uh, see that the multiple choice options might bring the negative sign down here into the denominator, at which point you could bring it up into the, into the exponent with the log property in the form of negative 1, at which point, if you have 216 to the negative 1 power, uh, one could write 1 over 216. So again, any of these that you see on the screen right now are all valid options, and I just encourage you to consider your log properties uh, in determining what is or is not a correct solution.